You're watching the IQ9 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. As we saw in the durability video, the camera lens covers are made of glass, as well as the black rectangular overlay. However, that overlay is sitting on top of an aluminum or metal frame. When we take a look at the other side, we can see a portion of the aluminum frame. And there's a graphite pad on the top corner, which helps transfer heat away from the components to the glass back plate and to the aluminum frame on the outside. So this way it'll help transfer heat more efficiently and the glass covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. There are 20 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Now the top cover can be lifted up and removed. There's a large layer of graphite film to help transfer heat. The LED flash is located here. And there's an antenna flex cable on the top and the right corner. Here's a look at the other side. And as far as the NFC antenna goes, from what I understand, it's built into the antenna assembly in the frame. Once we have access to the battery cables, we're going to disconnect those first. Once the battery cables are disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There are also two coaxial cables on the right side of the board that need to be disconnected by popping them off. There's some graphite film and protective tape covering the connector for the front facing camera, which needs to be peeled off so we can disconnect that. Here's a better look at the 16 megapixel front facing camera. The flex cable for the in display pressure sensor needs to be disconnected. As well as the coaxial cables on the left side of the board. Now this cover with the flex cable extension cable can be lifted up. And then there's another flex cable underneath which needs to be disconnected. At this point there are two Phillips screws holding on the main board that need to be removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. Taking a look at the front of the main board, there's a 50 megapixel primary camera, a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 12 megapixel zoom lens. The primary or main camera is the only one that has OIS, or optical image stabilization. The camera cables can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a secondary microphone located on top, some copper tape on the shield, and there are rubber gaskets around the connectors. There's a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is this white sticker on the bottom corner, and it's white, indicating there's no liquid damage, meaning there's no water that got inside the phone during our durability test. This is a multi-layer board design. On the back of the board, the proximity sensor is located on top, and there's more copper tape on the back shields, as well as thermal paste. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see more thermal paste on top of the processor and RAM, as well as this chip in the corner. Here's a better look at the RAM, which is sitting on top of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. The speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. There's some graphite film over the speaker assembly to help transfer heat, a mesh filter over the opening, and here's a look at the bottom, and the speaker assembly has those little white foam balls underneath that black tape. Next to this bottom speaker assembly, one of the X-axis vibrator motors located here, and this phone has dual x-axis vibrator motors so there's two of them in this phone one is located on the bottom portion of the phone and the other one on the top portion the protective tape or the flex cables needs to be peeled off now we can proceed to disconnect the flex cables on the subboard
The other end of the coaxial cable also needs to be disconnected by popping it off. Now the subboard can be lifted up, but be careful since the other end of the coaxial cable is still attached underneath. Taking a better look at the subboard, there are rubber gaskets around the connectors. The primary microphone is located underneath the shield. And there's also a rubber gasket around the USB-C port or charger port. And there's another liquid damage indicator, which is this white sticker. And the color remained white, indicating there's no liquid damage. So no water got in from the bottom side of the phone either during our durability test. The SIM reader is located on the back. And there's some copper tape and thermal paste on the shield. So if you need to replace your screen, you would have to remove the back plate and then remove the screws on the bottom speaker assembly and remove the speaker assembly itself. Disconnect the flex cables on the subboard and remove the subboard, giving you access to the screen cable. And then you remove the red rubber gasket. Heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. Pry your old screen off, apply a new adhesive. Reapply your new screen, making sure you run the cable back through the opening in the midframe, and reassemble your phone. The fingerprint sensor itself is glued to the frame, so if you want to replace that, you have to pry it off. And there's a rubber gasket with mesh filter over the opening of the speaker on the frame as well as the microphone hole on the bottom and on the top. To remove the battery, there are pull tabs provided to pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the dual cell battery with a capacity of 2350 milliamp hours each. Once the battery is removed, we can see these flex cables which connect the main board with the subboard and the components on the bottom. Once the flex cables are peeled off, we can see a large copper vapor chamber which sits underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. We can also see the flex cable for the other pressure sensor underneath the screen. And those pressure sensors are used to determine how much pressure is applied to the screen when you're pressing down on it during certain apps or games. Moving on, the second x-axis vibrator motor is located on the top over here. And that's also held on with adhesive. And the same goes for the flex cable for the volume keys and power button. And to replace those, you'd have to peel off the flex cable from the frame. And then there's a plastic bracket inside the frame you'd have to pull out to remove the keys. The earpiece speaker on top is held on with adhesive. So if you want to replace that, you'd have to gently heat it up and pry it off. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 4.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.